Hi there, it's Tim, Golf 5 Tango Mike. Uh, if you're new to the channel, think about clicking subscribe. And if you're a returner or even a regular, then great to have you back. Now, I'm looking in this video at a short dike ball for 40 metres, because if you're like me and you've got quite a small garden, then getting on 40 metres, let alone even thinking about 80 metres, is uh, quite a daunting prospect. Uh, those of you who know me from the past will know that my garden's pretty small. It's about 10 metres by 9 metres square, so quite a small garden, really. So getting 40 metres into a garden like that can be a challenge. Now, in the past, I've used NVED half waves, I've used doublets and everything else, which have, which have worked really well. Um, there is a way, though, of getting a resonant dipole uh, of 440 metres into a garden my size. Let's have a look at how we can do that. So I've uh, not only modelled this, but also used this antenna as well. I know one or two people are a bit unhappy about people using modelling, uh, but uh, I think it serves a purpose, certainly to give yourself a baseline anyway, in terms of comparing antennas. I'm a real world guy as well, you see. I actually use the antennas as well as model them. And the dipole in question is a shortened dipole for 40 metres. Instead of being about 20 metres long, it's about 14 metres long, and it uses what's called linear loading. Effectively, then, we're looking at 40 metres in the small garden. So can we use a shortened dipole for 40? And can it show fairly comparable performance with a full-sized half-wave dipole? The thing is, we can, we can cram any wire in, can't we? But is it going to perform anywhere near as well as a, a full 66-foot uh, or 20-metre-long half-wave dipole for 40? So let's see. So um, obviously with a, a typical half-wave dipole, for those who aren't sure, uh, most of the current radiates in the middle third of the antenna, as we can see there. So the question is, can we get away with shortening the antenna without losing too much performance? Well, we can shorten a dipole, okay, but we do have some prices to pay. We do have some capacitive reactants across the feed point, and we do get a reduction, a little bit anyway, in the uh, what we call a two-to-one or better SWR bandwidth. We can get away with anything up to about two to one, really. In fact, we can get up, we can use our tuner to tune anything. But if we're looking for something which is which can avoid use of a tuner, and don't forget, we don't want too high a, high an SWR on that coax run because that'll lose that'll lead to quite a bit of loss. So we want to keep the SWR down to around two to one or better throughout forty meters if we can, or the part of forty meters that we want to work anyway. So uh, a reduction in the two to one bandwidth is there, but um, well. Does it play that much of a part of this sort of antenna? Well, I found it actually didn't, which is quite interesting. So going back to this then. So linear loading, what is it? Well, all it means is you're basically folding the antenna back on itself, but you're leaving a gap between the wires. So it's not like you, you'd usually do to maybe shorten the dipole when you're tuning it, you fold the wire right back on itself. With linear loading, you leave a gap between the wires as it comes back, and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Now, the wider the gap, as it says here, the shorter the overall span the antenna actually needs to be. And uh, you often use to squeeze the antenna into an otherwise too small a space. So the wider the gap between the wire coming back from the wire going back the other way, um, the shorter the span of the antenna needs to be. So the greater the gap between the wires, the shorter you can make the antenna. And that's a useful thing. Now, what I do, and we'll show you some alternatives in a minute, but what I did, I used 450 ohm ladder line, because that's got two wires, of course, and I'll show you how to use that in terms of constructing both legs of the dipole, okay? Now, there are some examples of linear loading, and lots of people have done this on the internet, and some really good examples that have really given me inspiration. So let me show you one or two of them. First of all, there's Claude in red there on the, the left-hand side, VE2DPE. He's got an excellent website. On the bottom right-hand corner, you know, it's called hamradiosecrets.com down there on the right-hand side. And uh, he uses open wire ladder line, which is what I'm going to be using as well. And his is the 14-metre uh, the long, that's about 46-foot uh, wide dike pole. So we're going to look at that design in more detail. There are others too. There's another one here by uh, Bob, VE3WY, another Canadian ham. He uses a, a shorty 4020 dipole, which he works on both 40 and 20 without a tuner. And uh, he, I think he actually, I'm not sure if he still does, but he has certainly sold this um, commercially. And I can't remember the name of it now. Uh, but if you go online and look at his, uh, his call, you might well come across it. Um, but as you can see, looking at the screen here, look, it's only about 39 feet in length. And again, he's using 300 ohm ladder line folding back on itself, but with a wire going in between the two wires there, which is interesting. That gives him 40 and 20 meters. Another example, 
This is from Charlie M0PZT. And again, you can see what we've done, what he's done. He's got the white, so we take the left hand leg, for example, he's got the wire, the top wire going across, then back down, and then back underneath again to almost back to the center of the antenna. So he's folding the wire back on himself. He's done that using PVC conduit. And that's worked well for him. And he's got it down to about 12 meters wide, 40 feet for 40 meters. And then uh, finally, uh, one here by Lou, K4VX. Very similar again. And again, he's used a very similar design for a 40 meter long, 45 foot wide uh, dipole. Again, using 450 ohm ladder line. So what is my version then? Let's take a look. So my version for 40 meters, two seven meter legs, that's about two 23 foot legs for those still using Imperial. It's about 70% the size of a full 20 meter long dipole, 40 meter for 40 meters. Um, now I've done it, I mounted it as a, well, I, you can mount it as a flat top. Mine was actually an inverted V, but let's say you're mounting it as a flat top, five meters above the ground, so quite low, not very high. Um, so in this country, in the UK, that would be really good for inter-G and EU propagation. Both legs are made of 450 ohm ladder line. The far end of each leg has both ladder line wires joined together to allow the current to continue back along the bottom leg. The end of each leg that is nearest to the feed point is left open. I'll show you that in a minute. And we feed the antenna with 50 ohm coax via a one to one current ballon. OK, now. Um, Let's have a look at a diagram showing you the center of the antenna. So if we look at this, you can see the dipole feed point in the middle. And you notice at the top, you've got the wire attached to both sides of the dipole as you normally would. So you'd have one, one leg going that way, one leg going that way, and you'd have the coax going up via the one-to-one -one ballon, as you know, within a normal uh, dipole. But if you go back to the diagram here, you can see that then the wire goes down and then goes back under itself on both sides. And the 450 ohm ladder line allows you to do that. Because what I've done, as you can see here, look, I've actually shorted the ends of the ladder line together at the far end of each leg. By shorted, all that means is I've joined the two wires together. Simple as that. And that allows then the, the linear loading to take place. Tell you what, let me show you the one I put up a couple of years ago. It was an inverted V, but the principle is exactly the same. And it worked really well. Now what you'll notice there is we've got a pretty good tune, uh, 1.5, 1.6 absolutely no problem at all. Uh, the modelling, uh, MMANA, suggests a higher SWR of around 3 to 1. To be honest, I'll go with a real world example here with this because uh, I got a pretty good tune, as it showed on, on the analyzer there, 1.5, 1.6 to 1 throughout the whole voice portion of 40 metres, which is what I wanted to use, okay? What I've done now, I did model it and I compared it to a 40 meter, full size 40 meter half wave dipole, again at five meters up in, in the sky. So let's have a look to see what we, what we found. I'm looking at the far field plot. Look, you've got in red, you've got the shortened linear loaded dipole. And in black, you've got the full size 40 meter dipole. And you can see there's not a lot in it. If we go, if we look at both plots, they're very similar. There's a slight advantage to the full size 40 meter dipole. If we go down to the bottom table, and if I'd ask you to look at the, the bit, the column, which is about six in from the left hand side called GA, which is gain. And in terms of peak gain, both antennas are pretty similar. Uh, both have peak gain going straight up at 90 degrees because basically both are quite low in terms of wavelength from the ground. Um, but the difference in gain, we're looking at less than a dB. 0.9 of a dB between them, which in the real world you would not notice. Oh, and by the way, in the column it says height towards the right hand side, you'll notice that we've got five meters up uh, for the um, for the full size and zero for the red one, which is the short linear loaded one. Uh, that's only because I had uh, actually given it a, an extra five meters up on the actual modeling bit. So they're actually still both five meters above the ground. So don't worry about that. So overall, look, there's very little difference between these two antennas. Very little difference indeed. Um, the other thing to bear in mind is, apart from gain, is what, what's, the, what's the feed line loss like for these two antennas? Well, if we look at the uh, linear loaded dipole, first of all, uh, you can see that overall, if we look on the right-hand side towards the bottom, we've got the, the loss, dB loss, overall loss of 0.5 dB. Half a dB loss, nothing. So on a, in a, with 100 watts, we're putting out nearly 88 watts 
uh, from the antenna. Absolutely fine, no problems at all. And uh, as I say, you can disregard to, to a degree, I think, the SWR readings on the left because actually, to be honest with you, I got it to a much better tune than that. So you can you can definitely, definitely get a better SWR out of this antenna than the, the modeling suggests. If we go to the, the full-sized one, then the overall uh, loss, as you can see, there's about 0.38. So literally there's 0.17 or something of a dB between them. Nothing. In the real world, you'd never know. And to be honest with you then, the linear loaded 40 meter dipole seems to hold its own. Just to add, when I actually used it uh, about, what was it, two or three years ago now, it worked really well. Got around Europe, no problems at all with it. Did really well. The only thing I noticed, because you're using ladder line, and this happens when you're using ladder line as a transmission line, by the way, as a feeder, which is what you mostly use it for, of course, is that when it rained, it did alter the impedance. So a bit like a cobweb antenna, or uh, which those of you who use cobwebs, you'll know this. Uh, with ladder line, if you use ladder line as a feeder, or in this case as a radiator, then uh, when it gets wet, it does alter the impedance. If it has snow on it, if it has rain on it, it will change. So you might have to touch up the SWR a little bit with the tuner, uh, maybe in your radio or the, or the tuner you've got in your shack. But to be honest with you, that's, that's a relatively rare phenomenon, uh, depending on where you live. But overall, it's not going to make much of a difference in terms of the performance. So overall, is it worth doing this? Well, I think it is, even if you have to do an inverted V and really cram it in. I mean, I've got that 46 foot, 14 meter long antenna into 29 feet of space, nine meters of space, just by doing an inverted V and bringing the ends on a little bit vertically as well. Dipoles are pretty forgiving, even in even a linear loaded one. All right, let's summarize and see what we've got then. So linear loading is quite useful. There are other ways to load uh, dipoles, by the way, but linear loading is, use is a useful way of squeezing an antenna into a smaller space. You can, of course, use loading coils. You can do other things, but this is just one example. Uh, even if we're about 70 or 60 percent the length of a half wave dipole, we can get a reasonable performance out of the antenna. In this case, gain was only slightly down on a full sized half wave dipole, less than one dB. Feed line loss in this instance is very comparable with the half wave dipole, in my case, Point, well, I rounded up to 0.2 of a dB worse, which is absolutely nothing. And one thing to bear in mind, if we use a linear, uh, sorry, if we use a ladder line, I should say, to linear load, then uh, rain will shift the impedance and sometimes we'll change your SWR. But overall, you know, for a, uh, for a res, well, fairly resonant anyway, antenna on 40 meters, that'll get you on the band pretty quickly in a small space, might be worth giving it a go, especially if you've got some, uh, some scrap 40, 400, 450 ohm ladder line lying about. In fact, you could even use 300 ohm, uh, but the antenna may, may need to be a little bit longer in that situation. But 450 ohm certainly works really well. Or you would under the route of actually maybe using some spreaders like PVC conduit and bringing it back through them. That's another way of doing it as well. So might be worth giving it a go. Thanks for watching. And as I say, if you like what you see, click subscribe. It'd be lovely to have you on board. But overall, keep safe, look after yourselves. We'll catch you soon. Till the next one. Bye-bye.